Okay, in order to complete this mug rug, you're going to hoop your fabric, and I'm using a 5x7 hoop with a dissolve away mesh stabilizer, so it completely dissolves away. Okay, you're going to need a piece of base fabric, and I've used turquoise, that's 6 inches by 6 inches. You're going to need a piece of batting, 6 inches by 6 inches. A piece for the back of the mug rug, so it looks nice and neat on the back, also 6 inches by 6 inches. You're going to need a piece of applique fabric for the center of the cup, and that's about maybe two and a half inches by three inches. You're going to need two strips cut, two and a half inches by, by six inches, and two and a half by four inches. You're going to need some painter's tape and some pins. You're also, for the thread colors, you're going to need embroidery bobbin thread, which is regular embroidery bobbin thread, and I have small for most of it. Uh, you're going to need a light brown embroidery thread, black embroidery thread, and a, like a turquoise blue or whatever you want for the outside, and I've chosen this turquoise, and for that you're going to need both the, the needle and the bobbin to be wound with the same thread. Okay, let's go to the machine and get started. Okay, to make the mug rug, I have loaded the mug rug design into my embroidery machine. Okay, for this design, I am simply hooping the stabilizer only, and I'm using a wash away stabilizer. I put embroidery bobbin thread in my bobbin, and I am using uh, a brown embroidery thread, and I'm just using polyester. Could be either rayon or polyester, doesn't matter. And I put that in the needle. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch the placement. Okay, now it shows you the placement of where to put my background fabric. So actually I'm going to put the background fabric on top of the, a piece of batting or fleece and they're six inches by six, six inches and I want to just be sure that I am covering all of the stitching. I see no stitching now and now you could pin it or tape it into place but it's only a straight stitch so it should be fine. And I can still use the brown. Usually we'll hold on to this end so it doesn't stretch. And I want to stipple it in blue, not brown. So I'm changing the color of the needle thread to this turquoise that matches the fabric. Okay, and lower the presser foot, and now it's going to do all the stippling. And I'm going to speed this up because this is like watching the grass grow. Okay, now it's going to stitch actually the coffee that's in the cup on, on color stop number four. Okay, and now it's going to, color stop number five is going to give me the placement of the cup for the outline. I think 
I'm going to try and center one of these little thimbles in the middle so that it can be just eyeballing it, but you, you don't have to if you've got a focus uh, piece, and this is in this case it's going to be the little thimble. I've tried to center that thimble in the middle of the of the field. So next one is going to be my tack down of this applique fabric. Laid it on the top, but you could spray it if you like. And now we're going to remove the hoop from the machine, but do not remove the fabric from the hoop. And I'm going to trim away this excess fabric. And a good way to do this is to pull up on the fabric and use a curved pair of scissors or a pair of applique scissors and clip very close, especially at this top edge. You want this nice and close. Don't cut the stitching. But look how nice and close I'm getting this with these curved scissors. Okay. See how nice and close I was able to get the, the trim away from the stitching line. If you find you didn't get it close enough, you want to put your finger underneath the hoop to support the weight of the scissor and then just push. That way you can get any little bits out that you missed. You can get any little bits that you missed. Okay, I'm going to return this hoop to the machine. And color stop number seven is the tack down along the sides. Okay, color stop number eight. I'm going to put black thread in there because I want it to be the top rim and the handle of the coffee cup. finished stitching the black on the coffee cup and I can trim away any little stray threads that are showing. So the next one you could switch to the blue or a lighter color of thread and the needle but it's not necessary because the next part is we're going to piece the edges. So this is like piece quilting in the hoop. So the first stitch here which is color stop number nine is going to do the uh, it's going to show you the placement for the bottom border. I'm just going to leave black thread in here so you can see it. Okay, now I'm going to pe be piecing in the hoop. So I'm taking my 2 inch by 4 inch piece of fabric and I'm going to just put it right on top of that line that it stitched, that black line. So just right at the edge of that stitching and stitch it down. Okay, while this is up, I'm going to finger press this down. And I'm going to do the same thing at the top. Color stop number 11 is going to be your placement for your top border. Okay, and 
and the same thing here I'm going to now I've got my line I'm going to put this underneath of it right even with that line if you can see that really clear and stitch color stop number 12 which is going to stitch it into place finger press that down and these now I might even especially at this edge tape that edge down so it does not get caught in the next side of stitchings because it's what it's going to do so it's going to stitch the placement on the left side of the mug rug Okay, and now I'm going to take my uh, 6 inch by 2 inch piece, and now I've got the placement here, and I want to make sure I'm covering all, all of the stitching. tape to this side I'm going to press that out of the way and now the placement for the final border on the right side just want to make sure it doesn't turn over If you saw on the top edge that was awfully close, don't worry about that. that that's okay because of the fact that um, the stitching is a quarter inch in the other way. So again, I'm going to center this in the stitching. Make it even with that line. Where's the line? There it is. Okay. Okay, now we're going to finish the edges of it. And now finger press this out. Now what I want to do is tape these corners down. See right there? Because what's happened is that foot's going to come along and it's going to eat it. So you can press it crisply with an iron or just be liberal with your tape. Put a few pieces of tape. This is kind of narrow tape, so I'm going to put two pieces. Especially there these two corners, the upper right hand corner and the lower left hand corner you want to tape down really well. So I'm going to actually put that tape kind of close and put a second piece of tape right here because these are the two places where it causes problems. So the other thing I'm going to do at this time is I really don't like this back to show all this ugly stitching so I'm going to trim all this away. See, that looks much better. Now, I still don't want to see that on the back of my mug rug, so I'm going to put a backing on it. And that's where I'm going to put this on here. I want, I'm turning this over on the back, and I'm covering all of that stitching. Now, I could tape this down, but I'm not a big fan of tape on the back because it has a tendency to get stuck on the bed. So I'm going to pin it in place, but I'm going to pin it on the front side so I can see where all my stitching is going. So I'm going to tape it from the front out of the way of stitching. Way off my stitching line. Get a 
pinned all four little corners. This is way outside the stitching line. And now I'm going to put this back in the hoop. Okay. Now this, for this step, I don't want to leave it for a minute. So I'm going to stand here and watch this machine. I'm going to stitch this up. First I'm going to stitch it in black so you can see it. And it's just going to stitch a square around. Now, it's going to start around here. I'm going to be very careful. Yep, it caught good. Good. Not caught on the tape. That eliminates all problems. I'm going to go around twice, hold it nice and firm. And see those pins are well outside the sewing field. That's very important. You do not want to run over a pin with an embroidery machine. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I am going to remove the hoop from the frame. I'm going to take all this tape out. And I'm going to trim all of this excess fabric. Okay, now see, what I'm going to do is remove this excess from the front. And a lot of times it helps just to do it one layer at a time. Don't want to rush this process because you've got batting to cut through. As well as the blue backing. I just, you could do it all in one, but I tend to get a better stitch, a better cut if I do one layer at a time. Show you up here. See how nice and close that is? If I do all three at one time, you will see A, oh, the fight, scissors are fighting me. I'm more likely to pull it out and see I'm not getting as close. So I'm going to do this one at a time and I'll go ahead and do this off camera so I won't keep you. Also when I finish the top I'm going to come over to the bottom and trim away the backing as well. Okay. Okay now for this last color stop I'm going to change my bobbin thread to the blue thread that I have in the needle. And I put blue thread in the needle. Put the case back. I have trimmed the front and the back. Now see that little piece of tape? That's where I accidentally cut my stitches and therefore it was pulling away so I just put a little bit of tape on the back just to secure it a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to stitch the last color stop. And I'm going to stitch this off camera because this too will take forever. finished. So now we're going to remove this from the hoop. Okay. I'm just going to take a pair of scissors. I'm just going to cut most of it away. The easiest way is just to take a sharp pair and just cut them out.
Don't ever put water on your machine like that. But it's just trimming away most of this. Don't cut your stitches. Now to get the rest of this stable off. Sta okay, now to get the rest of this stabilizer off this to give you a nice clean edge is that I just take my finger, dip it in some water, just run along the edge and it will dissolve the rest of that stabilizer. You don't have to wrench the whole thing. There, that's enough. See? How it got it off the edge rather easily. If you have a few stray hairs, you can always clip those away. Trim that a little more. But even that's a fairly large piece. And see, just rubbing it with your finger dipped in water is enough to get melted away. Okay, all finished. So if you have any questions, give us a call at Attic Treasures in Occoquan at 703-490-1536 or if you would like a copy of the written instructions on how to do this mug rug and a copy of the uh, embroidery file in PES format, then send an email to me at waltzquilt at yahoo.com. So hope you enjoyed this month's Embroidery Club. So uh, we'll see you again next month. Bye.